Hopes and fears are very much part of the stuff of life in this Easter season, both for the apostles as they struggled to make sense of the wild rumours that abounded on that first Easter day, and for all of us who come so long after the death of Christ. Hope and fear are both present in our readings this morning, but they are also present in the life of our nation as we continually are continually challenged by the moral as the moral fabric of our society seems under threat. Reflecting on the gospel, it seems at first for the disciples as if hope has been utterly banished. And there is undoubtedly an atmosphere of fear. The disciples have seen one of their own number betray Jesus and are painfully aware that none of them, not one, has really measured up to the ideals of loyal friendship as they might have hoped to have done. And then suddenly, despite locked doors, Jesus appears in their midst. And as so often happens, his arrival changes everything. Where there was fear and distress brings his peace and a joy that the disciples had thought never to experience again. Peace be with you is his greeting. He shows them his hands and side. He is not a dismembered ghost, but the same Jesus who died on the cross. The disciples fear is gradually transformed into an unspeakable joy at the return of their master. He continues to speak to them, repeating his greeting of peace. He proceeds to give them their mission. There is no critical word of their failure to stand by him in his final moments before death. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them the breath of life, reminiscent of God breathing on the dust of the earth and creating human life in the first man. It is also the breath of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Father and the Son. Receive the Holy Spirit. Then comes their mission. Those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. And of course, their mission is also ours. The words of Jesus spoken to them are also spoken to all of us. This is the very well expressed. This is very well expressed in the description of the ideal Christian community we find in the first reading. The whole group of believers was united heart and soul. This is the unity of community and fellowship. Furthermore, as nights we pray in our family commitment prayer. Heavenly Father, we believe your Son is risen and present within our home. There is a beautiful link there for our thoughts to continually recall the mission in which we share. And today, of course, we strengthen our bonds of community and friendship by enjoying this experience in such a beautiful part of God's world. However, we know that on that day there was one apostle missing, Thomas. When he was told by his companions that they had seen the Lord, he said he would not believe 
unless he saw with his own eyes the marks of the wound and put his hand into the wounded side of Jesus. Gathering as we have, gathering just as we now do today, one week after the resurrection that we celebrated last Sunday, they were all, including Thomas, together in the one room. Although the doors were locked, Jesus suddenly appeared among them. After the usual greeting of peace, he invited Thomas not just to look, but to touch the wounds in his hand and side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas yielded completely to the experience. My Lord and my God, it is the one most powerful acknowledgement of Jesus really identified in the whole of the gospel and the only time one directly calls him God. Ironically, it is an act of faith. Thomas could not see directly that Jesus was God. No one can see God directly. But the experience convinced Thomas that he was in the presence of God himself. The following words of Jesus are meant to encourage us as we have not had Thomas's experience. Happy are those who have not seen yet believe. We too need to be always open to the experience of God's unmistakable presence and be able to recognise it. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. But let us live it well every day of our lives. Let us dare to dream that the community of the nights might become such that we live our faith with such integrity and so visibly that others who long to travel with us might glimpse the unmistakable evidence of God's kingdom in our midst. As true to the mission statement of the night, we proclaim and develop Christian values and ethics in society. We will fail, of course we will, but we know that even here, even now, God's love is stronger than our failures. So let us not hide behind closed doors, but pray afresh for the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we may reach out to share the love in which we live and move and have our being. Finally, we are reminded that everything that is in the Gospel is to help us to come to that stage by faith by which we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief we may find life. Untold numbers of people have tried this and found that it is altogether true. In following Christ, they have found a meaning, a direction, and a very special quality to their lives which cannot be found anywhere else. May that be our experience too. Be present with us, O Lord, for it is in your name that we are especially gathered here together. Let us not offend against justice or charity, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, help us to respond to and live out our mission in the church.